This will be a quick one today. Grab this job off of the quest board in the War Sworn Keep to retrieve a lost book in the overgrown thicket. It was right next door, so I figured we could go ahead and do this. Then we'll head out, I guess, to Warden's Bridge. We'll deal with whatever the War Sworn have us doing. We also have some stuff to check out at the, uh, the Thieves Guild camp, Star Camp. We'll check in over there, so what would they have to do? Pray to the hair off of their leader? I guess something like their gray fox or something. I love how they mix up the combat in this. And as we get more skills, higher tier skills, it unlocks more movesets. And so combat never gets, uh, I guess you could say boring. I remember listening to an interview with the guys from Bethesda. I think it was the making of Fallout 3. And it was one, it was Pete Hines or, uh, or Todd Howard. It was one of them saying how one key to uh, making games, at least for them, is to make repetitive tasks not boring or annoying. Like weapon repair, for example, which I, to this day, am a proponent of weapon repair. I wish they had not taken that out. Fixing your gun and, and fixing your weapons and stuff. And if you go in unprepared, not being able to fix those things, sometimes create a problem. That's a little more immersive for me than just running around with, you know, invincible god mode stuff that doesn't really break. Well, I mean, of course your stuff is going to break as you use it. Anyway, that's just But just stuff like that. And since you fight all the time in Kingdoms of Amalur, I mean, there are times where you'll go maybe a straight hour as you're exploring, just running into mob after mob of just different kinds of enemies. And they, they mix up the enemies, but still, if there was just one or two combat moves, like in an Elder Scrolls game, for example, good point. Um, if you had that, then that would get, it would get, it would get tiresome, I, I would think, kind of tedious. But with this, as you unlock new abilities, like the ability to do stuff out of block and out of dodge roll, it unlocks new moves. So you don't just get to do new stuff. You get to look cool while you're doing it too, right? Yeah, I really like the way they did this. It's it's one of the many things they got right. Okay, well, since we leveled, now we're in our second tier of stuff. Now we're gonna we're gonna sink a bunch of points into the might tree. And we're also going to sink uh, quite a few into finesse. We want to unlock, uh, I think it's honed blades or whatever. So if we need to dump some points into something we're not using, like, I don't know, archery or something, then we may have to do that. And with sorcery, I want to upgrade my chakram, and I want to get that ability way over to the far right, which makes your, your abilities cost less. And that's huge. That's basically extra mana. You know, if, if your spells don't, or if your spells or your abilities, like in my case, my little poison darts... If they don't cost as much to cast, then that's good for me, especially considering I'm going to have most of my mana reserved for passives. Like in Venom Edge, uh, Hone Blade, and whatever else I might want going on. That might reserve as much as, oh, I don't know, 80, 85% of my mana. And so I may only have enough mana to, to throw my little Poison Blades once. I need that to cost less, and I need it to regenerate faster. So we'll, we'll get into the whole regeneration thing with our... Uh, with our equipment. There's some really nice gems you can make that regenerate health and mana at a uh, at a pretty good rate. To the point where sometimes if you're, you know, not just, you know, just getting mobbed and just taking hit after hit all at once, that you can essentially stay alive in a fight. Your mana your mana and health regeneration can go up and just that fast. Look at those chakra. Come on, man. That's some, that's some badass stuff right there. That was almost my entire mana there with just that one little combo. I got my I got my fate bar full again. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste any of these guys. Save it for the big guys. Trolls. Some of the much bigger enemies we'll face later. There's this one in particular, it kinda reminds you of a scorpion. You'll know it when you see them. And those, those guys are annoying. Especially on this difficulty, because they're almost always surrounded by brownies or boggarts or something like that. And they're all aggressive. Meaning that there's no restrictions on their attacks like there would be on an, you know, normal or easy mode. 
they can all literally attack you at once. And when they do, you can essentially get one shot. So if you ever wonder, like, how am I breezing through the, the game, but I can't beat this one enemy? It's probably because everything's attacking you at once, and you're literally taking all that damage at the same time. There's none of that. Everyone's going to take their turns and hit you one at a time like a nice, polite mob, you know, like in a Chinese kung fu movie. No, no, no. And everything will hit you at once in situations like that. I think they're called Craddocks. Anyway, we'll, we'll see them when we get there, and uh, they're nasty. I mean, they're really nasty. Lots of debuffs and really hard hits, and they're quick and aggressive and usually surrounded by annoying little ankle biters that uh, they'll do work. When you put them all together, they will do work on you. Surprise you how quickly you'll die. You'll be like, you were thinking you were a badass walking in here, and now all of a sudden you walk out with, a, with, an, with an insecurity complex thinking, man, what... Does my character suck or something? No, they're just, uh, they're just badasses. Or they can be, anyway. Alright, so let's go turn this back in. We found this lost book. I like how when you have passives active, they show up on your character. I think the honed blades uh, by itself also. I think when you mix it with this one, though, I think they both kind of show up sort of the same. In fact, it's actually kind of sure hard to tell if you have both I'll active. You have to uh, know how much of your mana it's taking up and look at your mana bar sometimes to make sure that they're both on. If you deactivate one inadvertently, you might not know sure, it. <laughs> that is uh, one one downside is there's no welcome. thing to show you what you have active. You're welcome in the keep as long as your honor is intact. Oh, yes, from Overgrown Thicket, was it? Normally, that sort of thing is beneath even contract work. But these days, if the payer has enough coin to spare and is insistent enough, we put it on the board. Good, then. I know. Little pitiful level one quests. You know, grab your wooden stick and go poke a mud crab and retrieve my pearl necklace type thing. You know, those type of quests. Sure. Whatever. Uh, they're actually... Hmm. I think I can sell that. Probably going to need to sell some of this stuff. I need enough gold to... Do some training. Repair kits are much, much cheaper than going to a Sworn to war. I think there was some things that they meant to kind of hash out a little bit more, and they just probably just ran out of time and budget. Things like, you know, you're, 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 when he says you, you're allowed in the Warsworn Keep as long as your honor's intact. Now, if you're wanted by the law, maybe they might essentially say something to you for being in there type of thing. But I think they meant to, uh, to, um, write that in a little bit more. You know, stuff like that where there's consequences yes. for your, your karma, your reputation, and, you know, that type of stuff. Commissary? I've a few supplies of fighters likely to need. See, this is all basic stuff. Nice. Poison. We're still on iron. See, he's not even selling the steel stuff yet, so... Aye. What do you want from an old sour blacksmith? I want some training. I have just enough. Nice. And back to being broke again. But our smithing should be a little bit better. Eventually Four we'll unlock the ability to break down higher tiered gear. Make higher tiered gear. I'm wondering at what point you can actually put rune slots in your stuff, or if you can. 
pretty sure you can. I'm guessing at some point you unlock the ability to put one slot, and then with your final upgrade, you can probably put all kinds of stuff. That would be my guess. Not sure. Like I said, don't don't do a lot of smithing. Some of this is is a little bit of learning. I, I understand how the smithing works, but exactly what you can expect to get out of your gear at the highest levels. I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Anyway, we have something to do. Kind of go off into a new area. Already did Coil's Bane there, so yeah, we'll go meet him at Warden's Bridge and go see what's up. And then I think we'll, after that, we'll go visit Star Camp. Gives us something to do. Alright. Well, thanks for hanging out. I know it's kind of a short one, but uh, maybe next one will be a little bit longer. Got uh, a quest ahead of us to help out the Warsworn. Y'all take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.